for the constraint of time. The translation in English, her style, her sense of belonging, and the figure of Vanapechi. Although I was equally struck by the narrative in her poems on political themes, such as Chen Chulai and Al Janazi's Sixth Finger, they were terribly disturbing poems. But before I go on, I must mention that her poem, My Poetry, Yen Kavide, reads very well in English and Tamil, and it's like a manifesto of what she wishes to do with her poetry. For those of us, such as Dr. Shiva Prakash, Dr. Thomas, and me, plead guilty from the English faculty, this would ring a bell. That uh, we are in an innovative phrase, it's about how we strut around the academics, dropping very fashionably academic terms like uh, deconstructionist, postmodernist, and all that. But what Sumati wants her poetry to do is to lose her way, lose its way, and be like, as natural as a nude child, innocent. So that, I think, is a wonderful manifesto. Nallavelai varitavari poi vittadu in kavitai. Udai hilatra kurandai mayan. This, I think, will be an unforgettable poem by Sumit. I, I'll take up translations first. I think we've all woken up in a big way for the importance of translations. Uh, and uh, we are doing it in English, which is a very good thing, because to, to nurse a hostility to English is a very false binary. There is no such thing. English is an Indian language, just another Indian one. And it is proved to be a very strong link language. So you see, readers in English live in a multilingual environment. We must not forget that each one of them comes from a distinct cultural background with a vernacular of its own. So that is why, you know, translations in English are also equally, equally important. The second reality that has surfaced is, I think we are translating also for the younger generation. The younger generation which is into hard-nosed professions, which doesn't read uh, uh, Tamil or Hindi or Kannada as much as it should, but it reads English. And this generation, if you translate an ethnic work in English, it sort of evokes for them the milieu that they grew up in. So they also take an interest. So translations go a long way in being a link language. I'm so happy to see this book in English translation. Sumati's sense of belonging to her village will resonate with most of us. I'll share with you an interesting experience. There is Dr. Anita Nahal, poet, educationist, and an ekphrastic poet. She's into art and poetry, and she's based in Washington. So she wanted to do an anthology of Indian uh, poetry on cities, towns, and something. All the poets who contributed look back to where they came from, the villages, or the dusty towns, or the small towns, or metros. So there is this something in us, you know, like we relocate, and this resonated with all the diaspora Indians too, because she is based in Washington. This resonated with them because all the poetry, poets showed that they were searching for that something in their childhood, where they grew up, and the village, or the small town, or the, or the town that they uh, grew up in, gave it to them. So finally, she decided to uh, give the title as Soul Space. Her book is now called The Soul Spaces. Very much like that, uh, Sumati's poems, Inside, Outside, Neem Flower in Summer, even a small thing uh, like a jackfruit in the poem, A Sharing. You see, in the south of India, jackfruit can never be eaten alone. It is something meant to be shared with the family and friends, and it's a, it's, a, it's a community fruit, you can call it. So there she writes about who will she share them with, with these uh, unknown neighbors and all that. So in her previous collection called 
internal colloquial, uh, Siti Indra, Professor Siti Indra, fine scholar, she calls it, I mean, she locates it as a deracinated and a denatured sensibility of people who moved over. And then they, this is an attitude they use as a protective cloak to mask the emptiness of their lives. And I thought she really put a finger on the point of the urban dwellers where you can very well hold on to your identity. You can very well be a city dweller. You can be poised between both, but this is what she said. And I promised to talk about Sumati Stein and her remarkable economy in the use of words, what we call a verbal thrift. This is an asset in poetry because I believe that a poem has to create, resonate in the crucible of the consciousness of the reader in such a way it creates a silence creates a silence of reflection in the sensitive reader. So that is why you see like many of her poems are wonderfully brief. They have a lot to say and that will be a challenge for any translator. So let me read uh, this uh, one poem. Do I have some time to this thing? So rain laden life. When you translate, you see what happens is rain Latin life is 13 lines in English translation, and seven lines in English, Tamil, seven lines in Tamil. And I'm tempted to read the Tamil for all of you here because it's a luxury for me to speak at all in Tamil in Delhi. So there you see, you will see how she creates a resonant silence. Neshit tavar hale pirindu shellum mudivai. Mare Kalatil Ridika Mudivadilta Kadaway Shati a pinbum Kavum Marail Tolidurum Kadandavarum Unkural Ermain Shigil. Are they the same way, you know, like uh, alone is a translation that uh, is just five lines about a theatre scene? The play is over. Makeup is not wanted anymore. Okay? And she calls it Tanitirutta. When somebody is alone. Irindirikum Arangamundril Uttihe Mudinda Amarindirikirade Tanivan. Opani in Puchitra Adan Ahoram Adi Arah. That is so that it's so impactful. So since time is running out. I will now conclude with uh, this wonderful character, Vanapechi, that she has created in her poetry. Vanapechi is a forest nymph who is protective. She is an ancient deity, female deity, and she could be, she means many things to Sumati. She hovers around Sumati's poetry. And what happens is a symbiotic relationship. It is Sumati who is con created Vanapechi, and in return, Vanapechi is enriching Sumati's poetry. So you see, like, uh, what happens when a writer creates a character like this is she becomes an alter ego. She begins to grow on the poet. Next, she begins to grow on the reader. And then she really looms large, like she has a bill of room. So if I may briefly... Uh, share with you my experience of, uh, this is particularly for Professor Shiv, Shiv Prakash, my experience of writing uh, about an old domestic help in Bangalore, a Kannada old woman, Muniyaka. So she, she was given a plot of land in the back garden by my parents who admired her immensely because she was courageous, she was resilient, and she had a backy sense of humor all in her 80s. So I just wrote because I thought it was wonderful that she was going to live within our household. What happened? She caught on like fire. The story got translated into French, into German, into Marathi, into many other languages. Munika started living on many other languages. 
So, and that was not all. Then I started writing many other stories. She came in, and she walked out. She came in, and she walked out. Like, you see, she, she took over my fiction. So I allowed her to take over. So that is how, you know, like Vanapichi is somebody who I think is larger than we think, larger than we think. So with that, I conclude, and I would love to listen to others. So Sumati, it's been an absolute pleasure to soak in your poetry. I wish you many, many creative years in this adventure called writing. It is a process of discovery for oneself and for others. Vanapechi will travel with you very, very far. Thank you. Thank you all. Nandri Vanakkam. Thank you so much. It means a lot. I loved it. Thank you so much, ma'am. I am now pleased to request Madam Supriya Sule for the felicitation speech. Ms. Sule is an honorable member of parliament representing the Baramati constituency in Lok Sabha. She has held this position since 2009 and has diligently worked towards the empowerment of women, gender equality, and sustainable development. In 2011, she launched a statewide campaign against female feticide in Maharashtra, which has inspired many from the country. She is known for being one of the most active voices in the parliament and has also emerged as one of the best performers in Lok Sabha on multiple occasions. We welcome you, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Vitasta publication the throb of silence. My very dear friend, Sumati, who we are all here for. My esteemed colleague, Sri Rajaji. Sri, my ex-colleague who was in Rajya Sabha with me, who we always heard so diligently. We were the newcomers in parliament and has always been a senior guide to all of us. Sri Shivaji, Professor Shiv Prakash, Sri Ati Lakshmi Kananji, Dr. A.J. Thomas, and friends. What should I say? And I really am wondering where to start. Because Sumati is one of the most charming member of parliaments, most popular, most soft. But she can be very firm. So there is this lovely side to her. And I think that's what poetry is about. And I think that's what I'd like to draw. Lakshmi ji, what you said is poetry is not about rapid reading. It keeps unfolding. I mean, Lakshmi ji in her speech said that the Poetry is very short. It's very short and it's very crisp. But what thousand words sometimes don't say is what your one poetry will say in six lines. And I had a very interesting uh, meeting about a month ago with Gulzar Saab, who most people in Delhi would know. And Gulzar Saab, I was asking him a question that, you know, you write like chalk and cheese. Sometimes there are these beautiful Hindi songs which are so deep and meaningful. It's like, and then there's Bidi I mean, how does this work? And he says, this is what you have to understand as a poet, because you think Bidi Jalai is a young song. Please hear it carefully. So actually, when you hear both the songs, you must go and hear them again, because they're deep and meaningful. So when I was reading Sumati's book, I read it over and over and over again, very patiently. It's not about covering the number of pages. It's deeply understanding the poetry and the words. And actually, from the culture that I come from, I mean, I appreciate Lakshmi ji talking about regional languages. And actually, you never really, translation always misses out something in the soul. But I think I congratulate uh, Sri Subramaniam for trying his best, because we really enjoyed reading it. But I would like to quote, there would be some Maharashtrian people here who understand Marathi, and I will, of course, um, translate it. From the culture we come from, we go by Santa Tukaram, who was one of the largest, I mean, he's one of the tallest teachers in uh, India, and he's like a sant, so we worship him. And what he had written about words is, I'll just quickly read it and I'll explain it. Ama ghari dhana shabdanchi ratna means in our home, 
the ratna means diamonds and jewelry is word this all applies to sumati so i'm actually dedicating this to her it says shabdanchi shastra yatna karu means these are words which are diamonds but they can even be armory they can be harsh also shabdanchi amchi jivachi jeo means the words are life for us shabd vatu dhana jana loka means that dhana means words can be diamonds they can be shastra they can be emotions and they can be all that you have and tuka mane means tukara mane paha shabdancha ha dev god is in words shabd gaurav puja karu means words are something that you must pray to and reverence so i think that's exactly what a poet does and i think you are so blessed sumati that you can express yourself because words and knowledge is something sometimes somebody can hurt you but those words echo so words is something we must use very very carefully because you don't know what impact it has has on people's lives so word can be exceptionally powerful and so can silence and this book is very interesting because it says the throb of silence so there is silence on one side which is so powerful and the other side there are beautiful words in it which can be powerful so only a poet can bring this contrast together of silence and words so it's it was so interesting reading what she has written and i can understand that there's a deeper meaning to it which doesn't come through rapid reading so and i really feel that you're so blessed and this entire santa tukaram's book absolutely loyal because words is something knowledge is something that once you get it nobody can take it away from you power can come and go fame can come and go success can come and go but knowledge is a wealth that nobody can take away and you're so lucky and that too you come from a party dmk kalingar karuna nidhi ji i cannot not talk about him because he had this deep political sense one of the tallest leaders of india who was when i always ask what does kalingar mean i don't even know if i'm pronouncing it right which is the one who is well versed in all forms of art so he's a poet he's a writer he's an actor he's a director he's everything and to be a politician at the same time and sometimes this is what i feel that what are really pol- policy makers policy makers are representatives of people you know sometimes i feel there's a gap between us and them it's not about us and them we are only your voice and that too if karuna didi ji could have been an artist how wonderful that whole experience that's why i think the tamil legacy which has even led india and i mean the times that he was one of the best administrators and an artist both it's a great combination and we see that same spark in so many poets in dmk there is something like they say that soil of tamil nadu is clearly special so i really feel that how can dmk have so many poets i mean i'm almost jealous i think there's my colleague shrinivas patel ji here i think we need to introspect and have a maharashtra meeting very soon that too much talent we are competing and we are falling back or what we have to introspect how can there be so much poetry in tamil nadu and that too in dmk especially because i don't know how many of you all know mr raja is a great debater you can't win against him ever so i don't debate with him i'm always on his side <laughs> it's nice to be on raja ji's side i don't want to fight with him because i know i'll lose the battle with him but i don't not sure how many people know he has written extensively good poetry in tamil i only know it's good because he tells me i don't read tamil but it, there have been books that he has written so i think all of them under the leadership of sri kalingar who has been uh, really a larger than life figure for all of us i had the opportunity and i was very lucky to have met him much later in his life but he was a very very charming man and i think the whole legacy through dmk's various people my friend kanimoli who is unfortunately not here today writes wonderfully Sum- sumati writes wonderfully raja ji writes wonderfully debates wonderfully so i think it's a wonderful ex- shiva ji he is looking at me glaringly it's i am going to praise your poetry as well <laughs> he's looking poet singer singer i know that i witness is is a very very good singer so i think there is something i think 
not many of us will get a, D a ticket from DMK at this rate. Huh? We, don't, we are not poets, we are not <laughs> singers. So how do we qualify for that? But it's really, it's so wonderful because what is India about? India is about diversity. The beauty of languages, the beauty, you know, I think Miss um, Lakshmi was talking about the next generation not reading more. And I think that, I, rather than here, I need to turn here. Because I think most of you speak, I mean, you all speak English absolutely better than the British sometimes, I feel. You all are so qualified, so articulate. But I think we always tell languages is something which you must identify with. And your mother tongue is something where we all belong. A mother tongue is a must for all of us. And we must hold on to it. And we must love it. We must romance it. Because that's where we belong. And that's our identity. And that's why I keep telling, you know, even in India, you travel 10 kilometers, the spices vary, the cooking varies, the language varies. I'm sure the same thing happens in Tamil Nadu, the dialects vary. So we're, I don't think there's any country in the world as rich as ours. So I think every poetry, every literature is valued, and I'm glad it's all getting translated from Tamil into Marathi, Marathi into Tamil. We watch so much, and thanks to Google, we lose it in translation sometimes. But sometimes we do get, we read a lot of Tamil things. We a lot of theater which is exchanged. So I think it's really, I mean, the Tamil and the Maharashtra relationship is very, very deep. And my most talented thread, who I have seen, I mean, the Santat Tukaram's, this entire poetry, absolutely, because I've seen her being so strong. I still remember when she spoke on the India-Ukraine debate, and she was sharp. I mean, I looked at Jay Shankarji and said, mm -mm, it's not your day today. The lady's in a different mood today. And she talked about the pain of the war, which nobody really had touched in the debate. Because what do wars do? Nobody wins a war. Everybody loses a war. And it only leaves orphan children and widows. And that's the point which Sumati so beautifully put. We were all so touched. And we were almost in tears with her beautiful speech. So I'm really proud and happy to be here for my friend. I hope you do keep writing and keep translating. And there's one quick poetry, if there is time, I'd like to quickly read, which really I felt so strongly is about a shell. How beautifully she has written. She says, oh love, between you and me, there is only the sea. One salty teardrop of yours settles on the shore as a sliver of foam. The moon above in your amma's frozen breast milk the sea waves, your father's good night kisses, and darting crabs, your friendly playmates. A lone shell reminds the graffiti of prints on your dainty palm. I secure it with care. On the final day of judgment, standing in the long queue, changing my legs to fight fatigue and balancing the mismatch of pangs of guilt. I think it's one of the most beautiful ones that she has written here. We are really, really proud of you. The throb of silence, I would advise each one of you to get a copy, grab it before it's sold out, and make sure you autograph it and get it blessed from her. And this is really so interesting, silence and poetry. I think it's a very, very deep meaning from this most talented, and I'd really actually like to thank Thiru Stalin for sending us to Dell because had she not got elected and come here, we would have, as the entire fraternity of MPs, missed out on meeting a wonderfully charming human being, a beautiful soul, and a wonderful friend. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. I am happy to invite Dr. A.J. Thomas on the podium now. Dr. A.J. Thomas is an Indian poet, fiction writer, translator, and editor writing in English. He is best known as the editor of Indian literature, the bi-monthly English journal of Sahitya Akademi. He has won the Katha Award for his translation of Paul Zakaria's story, Salam America, the AKMG Prize, and the prestigious Vodafone Crossword Award for translating the novel Kesavante Villa Pangal. He is a senior fellow of the Ministry of Culture, Government of India, and a permanent member of the panel of literary translators, Sahitya Academy. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Good evening to you all.
Honorable Members of Parliament, Padma Vipushan, Dr. Sonal Mansingh, who is expected to be here uh, shortly, I believe. Thiru A. Raja, Thirumadi, Dr. T. Sumati, the heroine of the day. Ms. Uh, Supriya Shule, Thiru Tiruchi Shiva. My dear friends, Prof. Rajat Shiva Prakash, Dr. Lakshmi Kannan, the publisher, Renu Kaul, and friends and honorable members of the audience. Let me first of all congratulate Dr. Sumati Tamidachi Tangapandian for bringing out not only this particular volume, she has brought out five collections of poems, I believe. This is the second collection in English translation. I have had the honor of reading her earlier book, Birthing Hut and Other Stories, translated from Tamil by V. Bharati Harishankar and published by the same publisher, Vitasta, as well as the present collection of poems, The Throbe of Silence translated from Tamil by K.S. Subramanian. Four years ago, I also had the opportunity to publish in Indian literature a review of a collection of her poems in English translation by my respected friend, the senior professor C.T. Indra, titled Internal Colloquies, when I was struck by the freshness of her poetic voice, as I remember. The two prefaces of this poetry collection by acclaimed translator N. Kalyandraman and by the celebrated Kannada poet and playwright and my close friend, Prof. Rajesh Shiva Prakash, placed Tamirachi in a unique position in contemporary Tamil poetry with her five collections that have garnered wide critical acclaim. A quote from N. Kalyan Raman's preface, in an age where tempers run high and abstractions hold sway over our consciousness, Tamarachi's perspective is poised and rooted, paying close attention not only to the natural world, but also to the tremors of the passing moment in herself and others. Her voice is gentle and reflective, steeped in irony, wonder at the ways of the world, and sensitive to her own fears and yearnings. And Kalyan Raman goes on quoting her poem, which he translated, titled My Poetry, to illustrate this point, which I read here, there's an overlap, of course, because Lakshmi has been privileged. And I, I, I feel envious of her because she knows both the languages, and she has been able to just get into the soul of the poems, and that's a unique privilege she has had. Yeah, I'll read this now. A time passed of flawless grammar and flowing rhythm the present steeped in semiotic strategies, modern and postmodern fiction, deconstruction and sundry isms. In the milieu of this festival, my poetry has happily lost its way like an unclosed, guileless child. This is in Kalyan Raman's translation. This poem serves as a manifesto for Tamaraj's poetry, as both the prefaces point out. Professor Shiva Prakash's preface explores Tamaraji's poetry in a detailed voyage of discovery like narration. The highlighted center point of his argument, which I quote, in a, poet, in a prose and poetry, Tamaraji is struggling to keep alive and celebrate pristine feminine power, which has been time and again trampled by successive phases of urbanization and modernization presided over by patriarchy. Quotes close. In an emphatic attempt to situate Tamaraj's poetry, Shiva Prakash describes the greatest poetry as emerging in moments of violent crisis and transition and pinpoints the advent of modern urbanization as a historical paradigm shift of epochal proportions over the last couple of centuries, literally crushing in its pervasive, disruptive impact globally. The modernist process of dehumanization resulting from it as a universal pattern, he says, although its regional manifestation varies from place to place, language to language. Coming back to his main argument, Shiva Prakash 
identifies the supreme feminine power in Tamarachi's poetry as Wanapechi. This, uh, this was news to me when uh, Lakshmi said that it is a creation. It is a creation of uh, Tamarachi's imagination. I thought it, <laughs> Wanapechi is there in, in the Tamil ethos. That's what I thought. But now I understand that she has created this being and that's wonderful. I can't, I can't, you know, I, ha I haven't seen anything uh, similar in any other poetry, maybe very, but this is very unique. I haven't seen something like this, uh, creating an entire character and an idea, concept. This is, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. Consing, uh, coming back to the yeah, Shiva Prakash. In the millennia old women's poets tradition in Tamil, Embodied in the poetry of Avayar of the Sangam age, the 5th century A.D. Karekal Amayar, the only woman Nayanar, or Andal, the only female Alwar of the 7th century A.D., we see the emergence of mainstream spirituality that developed over time under the influence of various Aryanized deities. However, Tamilachi's Vanapechi is different. The poet declares, and I quote, Vanapechi is my alter ego. She is an indigenous village deity whose name literally means a mad, fierce woman who resides in the forest. A woman without any shackles, representing the rugged and raw sensibility of a southern regional rural woman. She never wants any shelter above her head. She is an epitome of free spirit. She dwells in the forest and resonates the matriarchal supremacy of womanhood. She is people's guardian deity, synonymous with Kavil Kapata in Tamil. Through her, I express the untold stories of my women folk, the taboos they want to undo, demystifying those cultural burdens which they are forced to carry, carry on for centuries. She is the voice of my soul, my partner in crime, my chum, my backup as a pillar of strength. She is me, exclaims Tamilachi, according to Shiva Prakash's translation. This section is uh, Shiva Prakash's own translation. As Shiva Prakash observes, Tamilachi's poems address the present through this primeval spirit, through her kind of world, though her kind of world is in definite decline. However, she enters and interacts with the modern world because she is throbbing in the poet's being. One Pechi pervades many more of her poems. Tamarachi's view of the harmony found in nature as part of her own internal ecosystem, as well as the society's collective heritage, ensures that she does not alienate herself for gaining perspective like the monarchists do, and unapologetically remain one with it. This results in her passionately being with the present, with the quotidian. Several of her poems are topographical, to the point of reminding one of the ancient Tamil poetics centered around the concept of the five tenais or terrains, forming the theme or locale of her poems. In some of these poems, the conflict between the collective memory of the village community down the centuries and the modernity thrust upon it by abrupt and fast urbanization happening under one's own very glands is dramatized through juxtaposition. In the poem, Passing On, the poet describes the act of transferring different aspects or elements of oneself at a point of transition or transformation and opens with the pity lines. I quote, it takes real hard work not to leave behind anything worth remembering. Quote close. Indicative of moving from one station to another or making a clean break, transferring. However, the poem ends with the cryptic lines. I quote, while passing on even one word from ancestors, how can we help passing on to successors something worth treasuring? Quotes close. Herein lies the crux of the cultural continuum Tamilachi proposes to pass on to posterity, posterity from millennia old cultural ethos of, uh, she has inherited. This preoccupation or cultural anxiety is what defines a very different kind of poet in our times of instant happenings. The poem titled Inside Outside, which is autobiographical and is about her native village and about her dear departed father, evokes the oneness with nature she has achieved 
melding her memories, the moods of nature, and the topography around. Neem flower in slumber is of a similar mood and setting. The Sixth Sense is an intense poem replete with abrupt and rough edge images working towards the resolution of an emotional engagement on the face of it. Emotional conflict and confrontation eliciting lines such as, I quote, your love escapes with struggle, a charred stench, my nose smells, as the stench of undigested breast milk, close close. This reaches the denouma, ending the poem with these lines, I quote, when narrating with dismay like a beggar woman ruthlessly driven away, what else do I have except my black-hued tears and the love lingering like the sixth sense? Quotes close. It is another poem which is a sibling to this one titled Confrontation, which opens with these telltale lines. I quote, when you decide what, what words I should choose, the silence I keep is strong and eloquent. Quotes close. And goes on with describing strikingly contrasting responses to the perceived affronts of the other. The poem, To That Vulture, deals with the unrelenting attack of time on all things transient and ends with the lines, I quote, as it approaches you menacingly, do reward it suitably with no misplaced solicitude and a smile that shrouds the pain and a pebble kissed into shape by ageless swirl of water. Quotes close. Inhuman atrocities during war are a perennial theme for sensitive poets. The poet's consciousness crumbling at the memory of several children killed in a Sri Lankan army attack on, a, on an orphanage-like shelter at a place called Chenchole finds a searing expression in an eponymous poem. Another one of its kind is Al Janabi's Six Finger, in which is narrated American soldiers in Iraq gang raping and killing a 14 year old. Dwelling on themes such as these, the 62 poems in this collection speaks to the reader in an intimate language of hate and sensibility only poetic minds can share. I wish the book a very good reception among our discerning readers. And I have a very special uh, request uh, for uh, Dr. Sumati. The next time, I think you have enough translations or if you're planning translations of more poems, make a selection and uh, I think you should bring out uh, bilingual editions. Bilingual editions, because in the South, as you may be aware, Tamil Nadu government is taking an initiative to have, uh, you know, translations of literature among the 4,000 languages. You know, the Tamil Nadu textbook, uh, the Educated Service Corporation. From Malayalam, from Kannada, from Telugu, uh, uh, that's in, in the conceptual shape. But translation from Tamil to these languages have already, one uh, project is over and the next project is now on. And there is, a, there is an ecosystem now, now that, that I think uh, the, the government is planning this, you know, the consolidation of the, the literary cultural ethos of the South. And, uh, you know, if you have these bilingual editions, uh, especially the youngsters, like uh, Lakshmi said, they will have an idea of, you know, translation uh, into English is good. I, I don't say that, like Lakshmi said, uh, uh, English is an Indian language. But depending on the, 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 the constraints of transferring, the best, uh, even that will be the best approximation, not, you know, uh, you'll not be able to translate poetry like that, you know, fully. When I translated OINV group, I have found that, and it's, it's difficult. So if you have the original also alongside, those, you know, when we, when Shivaraj knows, we, in, in uh, poetry workshops, we, we uh, even, you know, uh, translate from languages we don't know. Because poets speak in another language, you know, they, they have, they can share that uh, sensibility. So I think it will be a worthwhile uh, thing because your poetry, without reading the, the Tamil, from whatever comes through, through the translation, it's very original and very unique. So let those who can read the Tamil also, 
I can read a little bit. I can, I can read and understand. So there are many, among poets, those who can read and understand. So that will be a worthwhile thing to do. Okay. Oh, that's very good. That's good. So in, in the future, I think, you know, when you bring up this bilingual. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. I am pleased to invite Professor H.S. Shiva Prakash now. He is a former professor of theater and performance studies at JNU, New Delhi. He has authored nine poetry collections, 15 plays, and three critical works in Kannada, which have been widely discussed, performed, and translated into several Indian languages. He has written three Kannada plays based on one of the greatest Tamil epics, Silapatikaram. He is a recipient of several prestigious awards, including the Raj Yotsava Award from Karnataka State in 2006, Sangeet Natak Academy Award from the National Theatre Academy in 1997, and the Sahitya Academy Award in 2012, amongst others. We welcome you, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my speech is going to be shorter than all the earlier speeches for two reasons. Whatever I had to say about uh, this book of poems, I have said in my introduction. It was not an easy job to write this introduction because her poetry is so unique. We need new, new parameters to understand her poetry. I worked really hard at it. And I've been able to communicate at least 30% of what I wanted to say. And uh, most of what I said was already quoted by my dear friend Thomas, <coughs> who is himself an excellent translator. And another reason for the brevity of my speech is that I have this throat problem. And it was OK, I took uh, medicine, it got worse. So the cure was worse than the disease. I mention this especially here because all Tamilachi's poems are the explorations of the variation of this theme of cure being worse than the disease. Civilization being worse than barbarity. And the people spoke about the title of the book, The Throb of Silence. And uh, all, not great, all good poetry is a rage against silence. Dylan Thomas says, rage, rage against the dying of the light. You know, great poet in Canada, Allama Prabhu says, poetry it is a silence in the word. So it borders on the silence of the expressible. And Tamilchi is doing this in most of her poems. She doesn't take the easy way out. And people have said, he also mentioned it, that is a, a kind of requiem, an elegy for what civilization has destroyed. A lot of great poems have been written on this theme. For example, in Marathi, there's a great, uh, it was a, my dear departed from Arun Kolatkar has written a poem called Sarpa Sutra, which is a rewriting of the Khandavadahana episode in the Mahabharata. How Arjuna and Krishna go and destroy the whole forest. All the Naga people, which is celebrated by the author of Mahabharata, but in Arun Kuratka's poetry, it was one of the greatest tragedies of history. And all the progressive and regressive ideologies of the modern world have been party to this destruction of the past because they glorified 
the myth of progress. So whatever happens in the future is always better. And this is not a universalism. This was a cultural particularism of the Judo-Christian tradition, which through socialism and liberalism were imposed on the rest of the world, as the great Mexican poet Octavio Paz said. And Tamarachi may not know this theoretically, but her poetry is exploring this. When other poets write about the disappearance of the past, destruction of the past, they write from the alienated positions of a modernist, some Eurocentric ideology. But Tamarachi writes with her bones. William Blake said, God spare me from thoughts which people think in their minds alone. He that sings a lasting song must sing from his deepest bones, the marrow of bones. <laughs> so she is writing that kind of poetry. And a lot of uh, people, particularly many modern poets, uh, Indian English poets, and language poets, influenced by Indian English poets, who are influenced by all these uh, theories, uh, modernism, postmodernism, 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 all kinds of isms, they don't look into their heart. They're just aping what others said. And for example, even Arun Kolarka was a great poet, he writes about the destruction of nature. He is writing it from the alienated, alienated position of Mumbaika. He was not part of that. He was not connected to that past with the umbilical cord. This Tamilist's poetry is connected to that past, that umbilical cord, and it is embodied by this one approach. And Kalyan Raman has written a beautiful introduction, but somehow he translated one approach as an imp. I don't agree to that. Because the imp has a, uh, some demonic associations. Vanapechi, Tamechi is a deity, but she is not too holy to be a deity. She is human also. In fact, most of our native deities, particular Dravidian deities, are not all that serious, all that sacred. They are also human. They are the meeting point of the animal, human, and the divine. So this kind of sensibility, which combines the animal, the human, and the divine. Because the divine can only emerge from the basis of the animal and the human. So that kind of spirit, from that becomes the vantage point from which Tanerishi dramatizes, lives the paradox of our times, the dialectics of the change, which for the most part is not for the better, for the worse. So her poetry comes as a warning signal to the world. And most important thing, I know that she's a very eminent politician now, but she doesn't write like a politician. She's a good politician. She doesn't write like a politician because once, once when I was uh, on a, a shared the dais with my dear departed friend Oscar Fernandez, he said, you poets, you have so much power, you give us uh, your uh, power for uh, uh, one month. We'll give you uh, our power. I said, Askarji, I am giving you all my power. You give me your power for one day. <laughs> because poets have dreams, but no power to translate them into action. Politicians have power. But very few have the dreams. And Tanuyachi is somebody who has dream and the power to translate that into reality, which is a very rare combination. I don't envy her because I look upon her as my sister. So her achievement is my own achievement. So I congratulate her on this very rare achievement. Yes, her poetry needs to be translated. Uh, and I should also say one very good thing about the publisher. Uh, for most publishers, printing is the technology. But there are very few publishers who <coughs> pursue publication as a creative art. At a time, 
when books are becoming redundant because of digitalization of culture, uh, I also thought so, but you have uh, disproved my belief by uh, showing that the book is important, provided the book produced is also an artwork. So congratulations, and um, uh, I congratulate the author, the publisher, and uh, thank you all for uh, uh, giving uh, patient listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I would now like to invite Thiru A. Raja for the felicitation address on the podium. Thiru A. Raja is an honorable member of parliament representing the Nilgiris constituency in the Lok Sabha. He currently serves as the Deputy General Secretary for DMK, party whip of the DMK in the Lok Sabha, and a member of various standing and joint parliamentary committees. Sir has been a five-time member of parliament in the Lok Sabha since 1996. He has also served as the Union Minister for Communications and Information Technology, Environment and Forests, and the Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare and Rural Development. He has authored important books of relevance to social justice and rationality. Profoundly influenced by Period and our leader, Kalingar, he has stamped himself as a radical critic. As an exceptional orator, he has a lot of Gen Z followers to his credit. The twofold philosophy of Nietzschean atheism and the Nehruvian socialism has chiseled him to blossom out as a tremendous parliamentarian. We welcome you, sir. My beloved and respected elder brother, Tirichi Siva, Shiva Prakash, A.J. Thomas, Lakshmi Kannan, my colleague Supriya Sule, and other dignitaries and dayas, honorable members of parliament, and friends from media, ladies and gentlemen. I passionately heard the encomium shabad on Mrs. Sumadhi, known as Tamilachi Tangabandian, from the states not connected with Tamil Nadu. Being a Tamilian, either myself or my brother Siva, can shower encomium for Sumadhi, but the facilitation and encomium showered by others will give much more value than us. I really appreciate Sumadhi. Of course, she is deserved for all the facilitation and the encomium. My role, I think, a little bit critical. I am standing before you as a proxy. Honorable Member of Parliament, our Deputy Leader in the Lok Sabha, Mrs. Kanyamuli, originally has to release this book. Since she was not able to come here for personal reasons, I was almost pushed by Sumadhi to release this book. That too, I have come across freedom of midnight. But first time I have come, for, come across confinement of midnight. Because last night, 11 o'clock, the book was delivered to my house, and I was directed to <laughs> deliver speech on this book specifically. Yes, with my poor English, I tried to understand the rich language contemplated in the book. You are all aware, poetry is the other way of using language. The other way or other ways which depends upon the author will give the strength and power and the publicity. 
really appreciate the language is being used by Sumadhi, as put it other ways, is really tremendous and wonderful. Because usually in the poetry, how many parables and metaphors, what we call in Tamil, Omai and Uruvaham, were used in the language, will give the real effect of the poems. Tamil is a very deep-rooted, rich, ancient language. The literary value has been inculcated in the language even 5,000 years ago. When I was studying in the college, my Tamil professor used to tell, writing poem in the modern format is not unknown to the old Tamil literature. Whether it is lullaby or elegy, the good poems and literature are available already in the Tamil. My professor used to tell, I recall my memories in the 80s, in Tamil, when a woman who lost husband used to give his elegy, very simply, an unlettered, gullible woman who used to say, by way of elegy, rota velaki vachi, rosa apu ulla vachi, rota kaundriche, rosa apu adorane. I cleaned up a noble vessel and I put a roja inside. What can I do today? The vessel has broken. The roja will take. So simple, very simple language, but language is being used as other way, it becomes literature. So in that sense, I have gone through the, uh, this book. Just I want to have one or two uh, poems where I was really impressed. First poem I want to share with you because it is unique for Tamil Nadu. My Pongal. You know the Pongal festival is the harvest, pongal, harvest festival in Tamil Nadu. Usually the matter of pride and matter of glory and matter of enjoy, Pongal will come. But Tamilachi Pongal is something different. This type of Pongal can come across only by few, not by others. We are all in the generations, used to ride on the Pulla cart and used to go for flight and used to write a email letter, or sorry, airmail letter. Now we are using the WhatsApp. So these two generations, two N, we mainly met, not my daughter, not your daughter. We used to go to school without chapel in those days, 1960s, 70s, up to 8th standard. Now the scenario completely changed. So this poem, My Pongal, he, he expresses deep pain, how the Pongal was. That year, Pongal, there was no harvest because of the monsoon failure. She says, sweeping the yard clean, drawing the rice floor column, placing the bronze pot on the clay oven, painted with watcher strips, pouring milk into pot, adding jiggery lumps and cashews, applying a liberal dose of ghee, and tacking the pot down. So who cooked everything? Sweet ghee, cashews, everything. The last line says, with the harvest failing, pongal mat with rice from the store, leaves but a trifle bitter. Pongal kasakarad. And the and, since the harvest failure that. So, this is not only pongal. The sufferings of the people must be reflected in the poem. Some social cause must be contemplated in the literature. Then only the literature. Otherwise, what we call art for art's sake. Art should not be for art's sake, art for social sake. So the poem is written in such a manner. Then already that my poetry, Nalla Velai, see, Sumadhi classified into two era of poetry. One is Pelayatra Elakkanam Perihivaram Sangam, that is impeccable grammar. In those days, Sangam literature, impeccable grammar is very important. If one error in the grammar, then the entire poem will be thrown out. That was the time, first phase. Then second phase, modern and postmodern, like Sar said it. Now, Sumadhi claims, two phases over, good, my verse wandered far afield from both and turned neck like a baby. Nalla velai validavari poivuttadu, en kavidai, nirvana kulandayai. 
see the poem must be naked baby it should reflect the realism not the romanticism so this is he wants to say this is my poem in one of the other poem i was highly impressed what we call simple confrontation when you decide what words i should choose the silence i keep is strong and eloquent i do not know who is behind this whether chandru or not <laughs> when you decide what words i should choose the silence i keep is strong and eloquent i want to recall the words of professor tande the hottest places in the hill are reserved for the persons those who maintain neutrality at the time of moral crisis similarly i do not know where he got the uh, uh, pain to write this line of course she is not uh, the professor said uh, somebody is not writing political poems but i think that at the present political context i think that <laughs> my words should not be chosen by others that is why parliament is in problem <laughs> this line is so very very fantastic one more poem just i want to say last one i think i do not know how many people come, come across such a small uh, village experience the summer with the smile of neem vapamaram the summer with the smile of neem was never bitter in the midday sun after squeezing out the neem fruits drying the seeds converting them into coins and savoring sugar candies see in the village i do not know how many people have come across this i did it neem fruits we will collect the neem fruits if you are collecting 10 kg neem fruits please 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 sit sir sir see in the village we in the middle class in the agriculture family we used to collect neem fruits if you are collecting neem fruits 10 kg after it is dried it will come to 1 kg that 1 kg will go for 3 rupee or 5 rupee so much so samanachi used to collect it i also did the same thing we collected in the village without knowledge of the parents when we were in the school days and we sell it and we come we, we used to buy sweets that was beautifully recorded here because this type of experience is not at all available to this present generation so it has to be recorded then on last one thing i was impressed what about the where say moon where is this moon moon about moon ah here it is the other side the moon the poem with maximum translation the moon the poem with the maximum translation the moon that's all the moon is being translated maximum by the all uh, people but how it is in tamil there is a poem vitter in the italio idli you know idli vitter in the italio kotti vaitha kaptairo it's a cup of curd very very solid cup of curd the moon the moon was described a poet in tamil vitter in the italio katti vaitha kaptairo suttu vaitha appam dano சுட்டு வைத்த அப்பம் 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 சுட்டு வைத்த தொடத்தான் முடியவில்லை திஸ் வாஸ் தி தமிழ் பட் தமிழ் டு யூஸ் இட் வெரி பெயின்ஃபுல் மேனர் வாட் இஸ் மூன் தி லெப்ரஸ் பேஜ் ஃபார் இ ரெபிகோ ஒரு குஸ்டு நோயில் பேஜ் இருக்குல்ல அந்த பேஜ் கூட தட் ஈவன் தட் பேஜ் ஆஃப் ஆன் லெப்ரஸ் லெப்பர் இஸ் லைக் ஏ மூன் ஏ சில்வர் மில்க் பவுல் ஃபார் ஏ லக்கி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஐ தேட் ஐ கம் அக்ராஸ் சுமதி சுமதி யுவர் லிட்ரேச்சர் speaks about a leper it's a social cause anna siva is well known with bharati dasan vanmeedil ulaipor ellam variyaram urimai kettal punmeedil ambu paachum pulaiya selvaram idai pagal ellam kandu kandu andikki pin vinmeenai koppalikkum virivaarai paaraidhu what is the star tamil poet bharati dasan used to tell vanmeedil ulaipor ellam variyaram those who are working on the soil in the field as a working class as a labor these are all poor people according to the present dharma then the next line he says urime ketal if those people are fighting for rights then the landlord are rich people crushing them by seeing this from the sky 
Sky wanted to have the trope of silence. According to Bari Dasan, working class one side, working class is being crushed by the other side. This is seen by Sky. Then the drop of silence started by Sky. Out of the drop, stars came out as burns. This is Bari Dasan. So here she says, the leprous patch of refugio. So my request is, this book shows we, we follow the Dravidian school of thoughts. Dr. C. N. Anna, Durai and Alice, our mentor Anna, used to tell, whatever be the literature, whatever be speech, going to be delivered, my brother, his brother, Thambis, my brothers must show width of learning, breadth of wisdom, and length of vision. I think that the, these three pillars, Three elements, three ingredients are successfully filled by Tamilji. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We're pleased to have amongst us Dr. Sonal Man Singh, Member of Parliament. May I Before I invite our next dignitary on the podium, there is a happy news that we would like to share with you all. We would like to congratulate our Honorable MP Tiruchi Seva sir for having won in the elections to the Committee on Public Accounts. A very important parliamentary committee and so has secured the highest number of votes as compared to all other polit political parties. I am pleased to invite Dr. Sonal Man Singh on the podium now. Dr. Sonal Man Singh is an Indian classical dancer and a guru of Bharat Natyam and Odissi dancing styles. She was nominated by the President of India to become a member of parliament of the Rajya Sabha in 2018. She is the youngest recipient of the Padma Bhushan in 1992 and Padma Vibhushan in 2003. She has also won the Sangeet Natak Academy Award in 1987 and the Kalidas Saman by Madhya Pradesh government in 2006. In 2018, she was honored with Sangeet Natak Academy Fellowship, also known as Academy Ratna, for her contribution in the field of performing arts. She founded the Center for Indian Classical Dances in New Delhi in 1977. We're very pleased to have Ma'am with us for reading out a few select poems written by Dr. T. Sumati. I request Ma'am to please come on the podium. Vanakkam, namaskaram to everyone. I feel honored and privileged to be amongst this elite audience, all friends and admirers and well-wishers of Dr. Sumati. I happened to meet her not too long ago but it feels as if I have known her for many years. And um, more than anything, her work, not only in the field of politics, but also she's amongst us an artist. Because every person who indulges in any form of art, whether performing arts or visual arts, plastic arts, is an artist. And uh, I feel that more members of parliament should take up some, you know, <laughs> some, some form of art because it balances the right and the left side of the brain, they say. 
So too much use of right side of the brain can imbalance the personality. And this is a scientific fact. So I'm very happy that the members of parliament who are here and others are uh, one of the group of people who love arts. Sumati's so poems are not too long, they are short, but I was quite surprised to read uh, some of them. I've gone through them, and uh, the three that she has selected for me to recite, to read. The first one itself is uh, such a, a strange uh, experience. The title is Confrontation. And when you say confrontation, it immediately brings to mind sort of a kind of a struggle, a fight, adversary. Confrontation is not a very happy word. And when I read this poem at home, my God, it, it's something that took my breath away, really. Sumati, what a, what a thing. Confrontation. When you decide what words I should choose, when you decide what words I should choose, the silence I keep is strong and eloquent. This is the kind of confrontation she has in mind. When you walk with the disdain, like dismissing with a hand an old beggar, it would confront you with the assurance of a tree offering shade. The, uh, the opposites are so beautifully assimilated. While you strut with the challenging bombast of a mountainous wrestler, it would greet you with the solicitude of a mother feeding the child with tremulous hands. Borrowing from a nomad a sheet for the cold night, it would face you with fortitude, with the ferocity of a lone elephant and the deftness of a butterfly evading your grasp. Such subtlety, such tenderness in the face of something, the heavy confrontation. I think only a Sita Pragya can write about it. Sumati, I think you are a Sita Pragya. <laughs> The second poem she has chosen for me is Untitled. Rightly so. It brought, it kind of, you know, constricted my throat when I recited it to myself to see if I could read it. When the doctor said her womb was shaped like a question mark, it caused her no surprise. More agitated and surprised was he. So that very evening he published it in the newspapers as a wonder in creation. This has caused embarrassment and inconvenience, grows the husband smoking his cigarette. The smoke rings are shaped like a question mark, she said. A shame for the entire generation the birth and marital homes were left in enigmatic dismay. An expert medical team predicted complications in delivery kept her under intensive watch all the 24 hours. A group of visiting foreign experts expressed an opinion that after the delivery, the question mark could well transform into an exclamation mark. Got humor. A public trust gave out an assurance to arrange for twice the leave with maternity salary. Glad that everyone had forgotten the usual question of naming the child to be born, she was busy knitting the standard baby sweater. 
untitled. Very beautiful. And uh, the third, the last one, a new angle. The palmyra trees in a state of bliss. The palmyra trees in a state of bliss immersed in a dream of inebriated dark crows meeting. The sandy wastes in fairy woods luxuriate in the marks of the snail's love games. The surai creepers intertwining passionately the moon swells her breasts and flowers into, in, in, in star nipples. The moon swells her breasts and flowers in star nipples. The singed taste of palmyra root scales the fence like Akalikai's passion. Oh, oh. The dry dung cakes carrying the beehives of unshared kisses turn placid and drop off. Live cinders of the dig of the clay oven. Live cinders of the clay oven on the unloading of the rice pot. The tiny palmyra strands serving as residual fuel feed and bestows pulsations on the night. With palmyra grove bathed in aroma, Pechi, treading the sandy stretch, walks with unexpressed passion like the kitchen discharge, silently traversing the backyard. A palm swirls in a hand full of great, formidable grief. These woods exist not for the affluent, with wealth bursting at its seams, but for sickle karupans. What you said, Raja said, that her poems they sound something different, they mean something different. And they always bring out the plight of the unheard, the plight of those who are not seen very often. I congratulate you, Sumati. Beautiful. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, ma'am. I now request Thiru Tiruchi Siva for the felicitation speech. Mr. Siva is an honorable member of parliament representing Tamil Nadu in the Rajya Sabha. He has been a member of the 11th Lok Sabha and a four-time member of the Rajya Sabha. He serves as the chairperson for the Standing Committee on Industry and is a member of the Committee on Petitions. Mr. Siva created history when he introduced a private member's bill, the Rights of Transgender Persons Bill 2014, which was unanimously passed by the Rajya Sabha. The first to be passed by any house in 36 years and by the upper house in 45 years. As a senior leader with profound innings as a parliamentarian, he is an awesome inspiration to the cathars as well as an extraordinary orator who can enthrall the house with his multilingual proficiency. As an aesthete with an eye for arts and an ear for music, he is adored for his passionate and evocative style of oration and has two publications to his name. We welcome you, sir. Respected Ms. Renu Kaul, the publisher who welcomed all of us, Honorable Member of Parliament and former Union Minister, my beloved Tambi A. Raja, the renowned outstanding symbol of Indian dance art and a nominated member of the parliament, Padma Vibhushan, Madam Sonal Mansingh, respected 
Dr. Lakshmi Kannan, respected Dr. A.J. Thomas, respected Professor Shiva Prakash, and our esteemed friend Supriya Sule, and the author, my dear sister Sumati. Dignified audience, those who have gathered here. It's a proud moment, of course. Not that only I am here amongst other well-informed speakers, but to witness an elite aesthetic gathering lauding my beloved sister, Sumati. Sumati fondly called as Tamilichi. She's a very good, renowned poet in Tamil, and most of her works have been translated into English, Hindi, and Bengali. And today is another launch, the throb of silence. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the publisher, Ms. Renu Kaul, for having brought this cute and attractive and tempting book which resembles my beloved sister. As everyone pointed out, she's the first time MP here, but she's known to all the 800 MPs in the parliament. It's not possible for everyone. Experienced parliamentarians would accept that. It would take a very long time to get acquainted with all other members. Her simple and elegant appearance, soft and smooth behavior with each and everyone, her extraordinary knowledge displayed during the deliberations in the parliament, and the way she dresses impresses everyone. Even the women admire her, but no one will be of jealousy. So this is her character, and I think food for thought, time is up, and you have to be, uh, get ready for the food for stomach. I think we are going beyond our schedule, but of course it started late. I should apologize. I also came late because after a hectic traveling for the past two days and today an election was over by 6 o'clock only. I'm very tired and unwell. In spite of that, it's my bounden duty to be here. Who else will be here than us? To witness, as I said, not only we to prize her, not only we to appreciate, we should hear others appreciating our beloved sister. I'm happy in two ways. One, she is my younger sister. Another is, she belongs to my party, DMK. As Supriya Sule said here, DMK has a bunch of artistic mind, which descended from Perangir Anna and Dr. Kalangir. And poets are, of course, very less in number. Myself and Raja are orators. We also write something, but we cannot write poem or poetry to the extent my sister is writing and impresses everyone. And all the established artists, writers, poets in Tamil Nadu has a very special place for Tamilachi. And Dr. Sonal Mansingh here came. It's a real honor to my sister and to all of us. Because so far, no one else has excelled her in the art of dance. She still choreographs. She visits often Kalakshetra, and across the world she has gone over. And even in the parliament, his performances, though very rare, but very impressive. She has come here and has read some of her poems to make you to read more. First of all, the outset, the cover, the copy of this book will make anyone to take this. And if you just leave it one or two pages, 
you won't put it down without reading it wholly, fully. What more can be explained than the title of this book, Throb of Silence? Silence is not something that there is nothing inside. When something is more inside, when it cannot be expressed by words, when emotions override, silence prevails. And that silence is throbbing. What a word, throb. I think anyone can only feel a throbbing. And that is the voice of silence. If you cannot understand my silence, you will never understand my words. That's a saying like that. The eyes speak. A person need not speak at all. Silence tells a lot. I'm very much, uh, really, I was excited to take that word. Every word in a poem, of course, has to have convey some meaning and impress anyone who reads it. I asked the Professor Shiva Prakash, where are you teaching? He said, I was teaching. He said he was teaching in JNU. I told him the students who studied under you were gifted. After listening to him, I told that. And my sister had the, rather, students in Kuhn Mary's College at Chennai had the privilege of studying under my sister Sumadhi, who was an English professor in that very reputed traditional college, Queen Mary's. And she writes in Tamil, I should say. I think I have read somewhere, they say that in the modern age, women writers, women poets are less in number. Not only now. Out of the six classical languages in the world, starting from Greek, Latin, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Chinese, and Tamil. Greek, you know, the language, not only Greek is very ancient, but also their culture. They taught to the world a lot. But women writers are very less. You've got epics, you've got history in Greek, but women writers are very, very less. So also in other, all the five languages, as far as my knowledge goes, or as much as I've heard from others. But in Tamil, way back in Sangam period, that is before Christ, 3,000 years ago, there were 46 Tamil poets from the women community. So when it was like that 3,000 years ago, how will it be now? Yes, we have. Earlier, language and poetry and literature were confined to only scholars. But later, things changed. When dramas, the stages, the literature were only hailing and praising gods. And then about the kings, their victory, their failure, their love, their personal things. Later only, it came down to address or to speak about the common man. Literature should transcend ages. Anyone who reads a book, anyone who witnesses something, should attach himself with that. He should put his himself in that. He should feel that it is about me. This person is talking about my experience. The person is coming across something which I am coming means people will get attached. So how long they will be admiring the king's deeds? How long they will be worshipping the gods on stages? So when something is told about him or her on stage or in poetry, they feel that it is theirs and of course it has the eternity of course. Only when it gets passed through, it should pass through hands. For example, Carnatic music, very enchanting, very interesting, but we can only listen. We can just nod our heads. Except Dr. Sonal Mansing, I think most of us are like that only. We can only sit in front and nod our hands and uh, head and just clap. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the other way around, the lyrics or the songs which we hear in the cinemas, everyone is tempted to sing that. And there comes the eternity or livelihood, it gets on passing through. Carnatic music stopped with 
only those who were expert, expert in that. But when it came down to the other level, it was carried on forward. Likewise, my sister, I'm proud to say, everyone was talking about modernism, postmodernism. Whether in Tamil or in English, I'm literally scared about postmodernism. I can just pretend that I could understand something and I could interpret than many others do, but mostly, sorry, I cannot. I lose myself in the Romantic period poems. Later, when it came to modern age, it was little hard or ambiguity which not everyone can understand or only someone, we need someone like Professor uh, who spoke here or my sister to interpret that. Postmodernism also can interest, be inter, of interesting, came to be accepted when writers like Sumadhi came into the literary field writing. I should appreciate her. She has her foot, feet very firm on the heritage of us, heritage of our soil, and extends her hand to the modernity. That's not possible for all. Either anyone will shift over to modernism or some will stay there. But she is more fond of writing about our heritage and she has never compromised that. And we are all very happy and proud. Whatever she has written about Vanapechi, everyone was telling about that, the native deity, the village functions, and what all she has lost, how our uh, ancestors have lived, how she wants to live, everything. So she still lives there, but at the same time brings that to reality here and lives to the modern age also. That is also brought in her writings. That most I appreciate with you, my dear sister. This which cannot be. Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of emotions recollected in tranquility. Maybe for Wordsworth. I have lost myself in one line. I have not slept for a whole night when reading some literature just with one page, my imagination will go up. That is the secret of writing. It cannot just living and reading through. Just a page or a line or a word should make you to stop and think about that further, further, further and make every person an artist or a writer. Sumati's writings are of that type. I should appreciate. So when you go through this book, as in the title, The Throb of Silence. I think even after I go back, my thinking will be about this. I'll be thinking more about this. What a selection. How this title has been drafted, I, something it cannot be explained. Sly, silence itself. I love the word silence. As I told at the beginning itself, silence speaks a lot. Not all can understand. At the same time, how it is being expressed, it is throb, throb of silence. And this book has got a lot, everyone has quoted many things and Dr. Sonal Man Singh read three poems and my brother Raja also, uh, he said that his English is poor, but no, he is also well versed and he has proved himself on many occasions. And I should also quote at least one or two, because I've also gone through something. Very, very simple. If I quote something, if I read out something, that should make you to buy the book when you are leaving from here. It is not that you have come and participated. When you go back, I expect and I request you to get a book and carry it with you. Not only to keep it, keep it in your library, but you have to read it then only you can know the dimensions of Sumati, our great writer. She is Tamilachi. Tamilachi means Tamil woman. She represents the Tamil culture. She is a writer in English also, who knows the world, who knows life, who knows about everything. She has read literature very well, vast uh, uh, reading as well as are recourses also like that, discourses. So one or two lines I will say, not the whole, as I said, time is already up and I should realize that. How come 
a lovely butterfly baby came out of an ugly moth. How to solve the riddle of beauty? Uh, like a haiku it is. I was literally, as I said uh, in John Keats or in John Dunn, I forget myself. Say the great poet John Dunn, he would be addressing the sun. He would address the sun as a busy old fool. Three different characters. A fool, that to an old fool, but who is busy. Quite contrary, contradictory. Busy old fool, he will address the sun and will tell that if you want to wake up the world, you go and wake up the princess. The boys who are going to the school, the bees, why do you disturb me and my wife who are sleeping here? The sun peeps through the window. He is angry, but he is talking to the sun, why are you disturbing us? And that he would threaten the sun. Like Bharadiyar said, you know, you all know very well. In the Ulagai Uivika and the Enne, Upukum Pulikum Padavit Vidade, Parasati, Una Echerikarin, Na Natikan Akividuin. He was cautioning Parasati, if you keep me in this poverty, I would become an atheist. That is what Bharadiyar said. Like that, Dun will tell to the sun, I could eclipse you with a wink. If I close my eyes, you are dark. But I won't do that, for I would lose her sight so long. Even for a wink, I don't want to lose the sight of my dear, so I am sparing you, go away, son. Like that, these four lines only. How come a lovely butterfly baby came out of an ugly moth? How to solve the riddle of beauty? In the valor of fire, forest smoldered and died down, even after this catastrophe. Oh, which no quicksand of history can gulp down, I had to eat the next meal. This is practical. This is what the world is. What more do you expect from a poetry? As I said, you just go through, it's, we have very few lines in this. You will be involved and immersed. Not only it will tempt us to write, a good writing, you know, not only will make us to enjoy it, it will also tempt us to write. That is the real quality of a writer. If you listen to a song, you should sing back. If you read a writing, you should also try to write. Such a talent my sister is having. It's an effort not to leave anything behind that may evoke memories. When I, this is like everything, every, every moment in life is to be remembered. Every person we come across teaches us something. Everyone is interesting. If you have to have some memories, you should have some past. If you have to have some memories, you should have some incidents, some events. If that be the case, you should have come across with nice souls. Nice souls, nice days, and they leave nice memories. What she is telling is, not to leave anything behind that may evoke memories. How is it possible? You can only try, but not possible. The dampness of sweat when parting from friends. The spittle of rancor while facing enemies, the horror of a fake smile while avoiding traitors since even a word to our progeny. So I think these two small poems which I have read will make you uh, to get the book and read tonight at least. This is my humble request. The real compliment or an appreciation to a writer is that you have to read what has been written and to give a feedback. This I have come across and I am impressed. So our compliments to Ms. Renegal. Again, I say I am really impressed by the way the book has been brought out. And my sister goes beyond words 
I'm really very proud, my dear sister. Not for your writing, because we know all very well. But this gathering here in the Constitution Club at Delhi, full of elite audience, all learned, all intellectuals, and I said, aesthetic. Aesthetic mind is not easy for each and every one. The gathering here may be a few, a hundred or so, but this hundred is equal to a lack of ordinary people because you can carry messages. So this is a great evening to you, Sumati, and of course to us. Not that we have the opportunity to participate, but to witness. I, my sister has got a great audience in Delhi too, not only in Chennai, not only in Tamil Nadu. And as the professor said, you are a good politician. When she is with us, she will be, of course. More or less, we are not politicians. We are in politics, that's all. Our poems, as my brother Tambi Raja told, it is addressing social issues. It talks about the common man. It tells about a rural woman who lives a life. So all these things have been brought, not only in this book, in all the writings, but this book has come to you today. And we are all very happy and privileged to be on the occasion of its launch. I thank each and everyone who has been here for so long. The crowd has not dispersed. I'm watching that. We are all professional speakers. So we used to watch how many have come, how many have slipped all, how many have uh, sneaked, just, just like that. But I see most of those who were present when I came here are still here. Re listening to that. <laughs> Not that uh, you are all compelled to sit here. You are all listening, enjoying, approving and applauding. What more do you need, my dear sister? This is a real great, good audience. And again I say, we are all happy that you are our sister, that you are our representative in the lower house, people's house, and you write more more that you should live even after your age. That is the real credit a literarian can earn. Not everyone can. Sonal Mansingh's uh, dance will be spoken in future. And uh, like Thiruvalluvar, like Bharadya, like Bharadasan, like Keats, like Shelley, Sumati also will live after her life. That much. Her works will uh, earn her all this reputation, and we are all very happy to be here and to have you here also. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you so much, sir. I now request Dr. T. Sumati to come for the author's remarks. Dr. T. Sumati also. <laughs> Well, my dear friend Reno, who has again come out with a wonderful collection of my poems, and um, dear brother, Professor H. S. Shiv Prakash, Dr. AJT, we fondly call him as AJT, Dr. AJ Thomas, and my dear um, Akka, Writer, novelist Lakshmi Kannan, who has delivered a speech and left as soon as she got it done. My dear friend, Supriya Sule. My dear friend as well, a party whip, member of the parliament, fellow parliamentarian, dear Raja, and my dear brother, who has just delivered a wonderful speech and taken a seat, my dear brother, Shiva Annan. And Madam Sonal Man Singh, a dance of global acclaim, Bhatma Vibhushan, who is grazing the occasion that 
art transcends borders, politics, and parties. And my dear senior colleagues, members of the parliament from my party, from Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha, as well as from other parties, and students from the Jawaharlal Nehru University, my friends and uh, fellow lambs, and an honorable member of the parliament who is now grazing the occasion. All of you, a very good evening. I know it's high time for dinner, but still I would like to share few ideas which had actually triggered me to write. And it is a sort of a thanksgiving speech only. I'd like to open up my speech with Philip Sidney's quote here. Sidney asked, tell me, O oh muse, what is the cause for this? It is just sheer love for poetry, especially when the muse descends on you like a demon. Kavide ungal meedu oru pisasai pola iranga vendum. And that has actually triggered me to write poems. Well, as has been rightly stated down by uh, our um, member of parliament, Raja, as well as Shiva Annan, you must all be familiar with the great rich legacy of Tamil literature. I am proud of my legacy. I stand before he, uh, you as part of that legacy, but I always take pride in announcing myself and proud of my identity as a rural native poet. I specifically purposefully avoid the word vernacular because it has its own colonial baggage. So I stand here as a native poet who is proud of my landscape, a dry black soil which I term as Karisal in Chase Tamil. Hot summer is the most prevalent season and I hail from an agrarian community in which failure of monsoon and rains is fatal to farmers. My soil, landscape, vegetation, birds, poultry, cattle stock and above all, the native talkative intruding mercy at humane and affectionate people with their worldly wisdom form the crux of my poems. Especially my own Vanapechi as has been beautifully brought out by all the eminent speakers, particularly by my dear brother Shiva Prakash who has done a wonderful introduction and pitched me where does my poetry belong in this lineage? That's the greatest work he has done. He has fixed my place in the modern Tamil poetry. And what is actually Vanapechi? What does she mean to me? My alienation, my diasporic longing, my inability to uh, adapt to a pretentious culture, my oxymoronic being between living and existence are the key themes of my poems. I evolved neither as a woman nor as a man, but as a human being through my poems. It's just a voice, neither revolutionary nor reformative and declaring, but a firm, true voice, a robust village voice, uncontaminated by any artificiality or genre or isms, but deeply immersed in the natural order of my earth and soil. Pudi padan the Kilechala ilirind, Adanodi a Virvail, Kavuchi Manathilirindi and Kavide Perekir. Don't get just taken away by my nail polish and the lipstick. And beneath the skin, you know, runs that order of my village. That is what is the real me. That is what my poems talk about. So I declare myself as a Philistine poet who hears the inner voice of my people, registers it in my soul and walks with it, uncorrupt by the artificial air-conditioned seasoning. So why this uh, poems in English? Because though I have grown up with a strong cultural roots in Tamil, and as my uh, name bespoke, you know about, the, I love English, but I worship Tamil. 
Why a translation is very necessary, it's thanks to my parents who were school teachers and to my wonderful teachers and professors who made me realize that English is a very important language. It's a language of liberation to us. Not only English, for that matter, we all respect any language, all the languages. All of us here, we advocate to learn as many languages as possible. We are against only the imposition of any language. Not any language. In fact, my internal colloquies have been translated into Hindi and into Bengali by rubric publications quite recently. We will be launching it quite soon. So, uh, translation is not just a literary activity, it's a responsible social and cultural activity. I would like to thank my translator uh, because it's out of sheer love Dr. K.S. Subramanian has done it. He is no more with us. Since two years he has taken to translate select poems from my other publications. He was the one who translated Jay Gandhan into English, many short stories for Kada publications, so it's an honor uh, um, for me to get translated by him and I place it on record, my heartfelt uh, thanks to the, to the translator. Just a simple explanation. Susan Barsnett opines that translation is not a process associated with neither academics nor a literary pursuit, but culture as an important component of translation decides it as the most engaging activity. That way, Texts which emerge from unique native culture and language need to be brought into focus as well to the limelight. And that is why I have brought out this translation because I've have, I have very strong village cultural roots. And you might need another dictionary, a lot of glossary to understand my poems. One of my poems speak about Pambadam. That is... Um, an ornament which is owned by my grandmother. We call um, our father's amma as apata, mother's amma as ammata. Ata is the chaste word. Amma, ata is a chaste word in Tamil for amma. So how do I explain this palm to a, a foreign reader? I have to write a long footnote, a long hanging earrings which is owned by the South Indian women and so it goes on. But still I take pains because I feel that this is a very responsible cultural activity which any writer or any artist should take it as a responsibility. The greatest philosopher Hegel once remarked, India existed, has existed for millennia in the Europeans. It is high time we have to take stock of our own treasures in literature and talk about the Indian minds especially regional ones expressed and experienced in creative writings, say poetry, fiction and prose and drama, and that way as a native poet, taking stock of literature, I have all the writers from various states of India, one from Karnataka, one from Kerala, and Sonal also here from another state. So it is an amalgamation of all the regional minds on the stage stage. That's how we are now taking stock of our literature. And when Alexander Pope translated Iliad into English, there were criticism. And nothing can be so true to original text. Probably 90% true to the source text. And that's how I have tried to transport my poems and my sensibilities to a foreign leader and hope you'll also enjoy it. And um, as my uh, brother uh, Shiva has rightly pointed out that it is an honor to be acknowledged by so many elite and intellectual minds, especially uh, professors. The world has had many hundreds of admirable poets and philosophers, but of these hundreds, only a very few had the fortune to attract a Boswell or an Eckerman. I'm so fortunate to attract all these elite and intellectual mind and um, with deep appreciation and gratefulness I uh, wanted to thank my brother Shiva Prakash who actually sat with these poems and chiseled them edited them um, with his fine sensibilities and thank Kalyana Raman also for a wonderful foreword and I remember here my professor uh, T.V. Shubharap who is a student of F.R. Lewis from Cambridge who has actually 
given me that I should put my foot in my mother tongue, how many wings of other languages I can have to fly out throughout the world, but I should write my creative writings in Tamil, following the footsteps of Kugi Bwantiago, when he declared that I am no longer writing my creative writing in English, I am going to go back to my um, my language. Ikako, Ikako. That's a political statement. Nan Yenude Inakuru Murik Thirmahindrain, Angilatil Yeruva de Vedith, Idu Rarasi and Nelai Pad, Iruva the Varadangal, Angilatil Yeruvi a Pimba, Nan Yen Inakuru Murik Thirmahirin, Endersona, Kugi Vantiago. That's why I specifically choose to write my poems in my mother tongue, criticisms, essays, everything, maybe in English. But it's a political statement also for me because. A poetry is a very challenging thing to translate and as long as language is the raw material to write poem, my language, especially the Karasal dialect is very unique, which can never be translated. So why should I write my creative writings in some other language? Instead, I would like to translate and that way I keep up my roots as well as I try to reach out readers from all over the world. And um, Again, I'd um, uh, like to thank uh, Lakshmi Kandan, Kaveri Akka. Uh, wisdom, passion, joined with simplicity is Kaveri Akka. She has taken all the pains with all her indispositions to be here. She has just left, I believe. And she's a wonderful novelist and writer in Tamil as well. So my thanks to her. And I always seen that she has spoken through her characters in her novels, and that is the inspiration I get from her. For example, Thomas also here with this work and with this created a niche in the field of translation and poetry. And there are Shiv Prakash with this wonderful translation of Silapadigaram. First time has been translated into Canada and to English by our uh, ace um, um, brother um, uh, Shiv Prakash. And uh, all of them have been grooming me up in my sensibilities that this is where I fix up my poems and this is where Tamilichi actually fit in. And special thanks to uh, Madam Sunal Mansingh. Women should use her power, says Tagore, to break through the surface and go to the center of things wherein the mystery of life dwells an eternal source of interests. Ma'am, you are an impeccable dancer with such power in you, expressing yourself with varied interest, not only dance, I know you are such a wonderful, warm human being with a heart of a little child inside you always. And I have written the introduction for uh, Raja as well as Annan, but still I would like to say a few words about him. My dear own uh, fellow parliamentarian, Raja, a fire on the field with a disarming ease, who could dismantle not only the spectrum waves, but anything irrational and unscientific, a man of grit and determination. Thank you very much for being here. And my dear own brother, Sivanan, I would uh, have so many metaphors and similes about him. The way he has actually read through my poems and picked up uh, those important four lines is really mesmerizing. He's a man of many depths. And I would say his panther-like presence in the parliament. That's how I sum up uh, his presence. And I would like to thank all my uh, friends who have gathered here and who have stuck up even past after 9 o'clock. I wouldn't say not as lovers of poetry. Most of us will be, definitely. But for the warm friendship which you all share with me. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank all the LAM fellows for your effective and disciplined teamwork. And just one quotation by Critic Tamilavan about me. That's where I just leave. Tamilavan has actually talked about where is my place in Tamil poetry. And Anand has also talked about postmodernism. Postmodernism is actually a period, not just a particular genre. It's a period. Tamilavan says, I quote, Tamilachi has a doctorate in English literature. In India, modernism enters regional languages only through practitioners of English literature. Quite contrary to this, Tamilachi's poems go beyond modernism. 
we can call it a world embracing outlook people who care deeply about the earth will write about the local using images that reinforce the bio regional tamilachi has made tamil poetry earth centric that is where i'm happy to place myself and i'm so humbled and honored by all the kind words and compliments and writing as has been stated out by many and as has been expressed myself also in the beginning a poem is what it does to you a poem is a feeling that adavadhu mayogavsky romba alaga solliranga oru vishayathai solluvadharku kavithai thavira veru endha valigalum illai ennum boldu mattume penavai todungal when you don't have any other option to express something without the option of only only if you have the option of poetry when you have any other options to express yourself only you have poetry to express take out your pen to write because it is such a treasured tool it is such a powerful weapon don't just waste it waste it to express all your opinion about all the other miscellaneous things எது வலிமையானது எது உண்மையானது எது உங்களை மிக அதிகமாக பாதிக்கிறதோ அது ஒன்றுக்காக மட்டுமே உங்கள் பேனாவை தொட்டு கவிதையை எழுதுங்கள் ஐ திங்க் ஐ செலிப்ரேட் மை செல்ஃப் அண்ட் சிங் மை செல்ஃப் இன் தாட் வே தேங்க்யூ ஆல் வெரி மச் ஃபார் பீங் வித் மீ இன் திஸ் வண்டர்ஃபுல் மொமெண்டஸ் அகேஷன் தேங்க்யூ தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் மேம் Thank you so much to everyone who joined us today for the launch of the Throb of Silence. We're beyond happy to have shared this wonderful moment with all of you. We hope you all had a great time. <laughs>